Alrighty, it's time for the next BTS vlog. It is uh, 13, well, 14 hours into the day of Friday, January 3rd, 2014. And this vlog is three days late because this is going to be for the first, uh, for January 1st, from New Year's Day to the 3rd. Uh, that's when this vlog is going to cover. And we're just starting it now. <laughs> Uh, vlogging is a, is, is a uh, rather um, interesting phenomenon in that you have to vlog every single day but sometimes you're not always able to there are things sort of that conspire to uh, trip you up and make you uh, very late to the vlog and that's been going on these last couple of days and so, although I was intending to vlog from the first arm, and we're now into uh, the second, the uh, in, into the third year of, uh, on YouTube, yeah, we just completed two years, so it was our second, a second, as of January first, it's our second anniversary, and we all we began, I began with th this adventure <coughs> because of Cassandra. Uh, Cassandra Croft at uh, Nerds R L, and it was an issue. I was sort of sitting there trying to figure out what to do in terms of how to vlog on Linux, because it was stated from all the reviews I ever read that you couldn't vlog or you couldn't do video production on uh, Linux. That there were a lot of problems with it. So I said, well. As I was watching uh, Nerds Orel, let's give this a shot. And that was sort of, uh, it was, um, I think it was uh, you know, 2011, uh, New Year's Eve. And so finally I got enough uh, together that uh, uh, right after watching Nerds Orel, I decided that I'd do my, uh, my, uh, my bit and see how it worked out and put out the uh, first webcast of uh, of uh, Big Bang Theory RL. And I was trying to figure out, and the thing is, the, it, I was trying to sort of think of a name and realize that the closest uh, way I was able to describe what I do for a living is to sort of point at uh, Sheldon Cooper and say, you know that TV show Big Bang Theory? Well, I'm the real life version of it. So that's how Big Bang Theory RL came about. And now, two years later, it's gone from simply the web show to the uh, web TV, to, to, to the uh, Cyborg Alpha TV. And I have a lot of fun. And one of the things I, I, I like watching and doing is some of these taste tests. And I live in an Asian community. So, I get to enjoy a lot of Asian snacks. This, this, is, this is Oreo. But it's from Asia. It's not. It's not from around here. It's not from North America. So these are Asian Oreos right here. And here's another bag of Asian Oreos. There's two bags here, and there's something called uh, Kratz. And I'm gonna try these. I'm gonna do a, 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 a snack test. Now, one of the things I I don't particularly like about some of these Asian snacks is that they come in small packages. So if I can if I can avoid it, I don't usually get them unless there's something very specific, particular. So I'm gonna have the Oreo now. This is the uh, regular bl the blue bag, and it looks like it's got hazelnut in it. So I'm gonna try it out and sort of see what it says because on the back here it's got hazelnut, and I'm gonna try this out and sort of see what it's like. It's nice. It's pretty good, actually. Much different than Oreo than here in, 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 in regular Oreos. Nice flavors. So now... I'm going to try the red one, 
The red one has strawberry on it. So I'm assuming that this is going to have a strawberry flavor to it. So let me open up the, the, the uh, package here. Yeah. Definite strawberry flavor to it. Chocolate and strawberry. This is it here. Very good snack. And there's one more I've already tried. I've tried this already. So let's open this. I opened it. And I had it like I had this before and I really liked it. It's kind of a, a of a spicy pretzel. Yeah, it's very good. I like this. This would be good to have with sausages. Um, beer. Um, if you know the bon mi, uh, Vietnamese sandwiches, this is very good with that too. Very good stuff, you know. And this is called cracks. And I have no idea what, 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 where this came from in terms of if this is originally, um, Asian or not, but still, nonetheless, very good. I really do enjoy this a lot. Anyway, I'm going to end this here for this segment. I will come back in a couple of hours with uh, two more segments. I'll let you in on some of the uh, research that I've been doing. I found this interesting guy named um, Chris Hedges. Uh, after I was working on Miles Power for a bit and looking at his debunking stuff, uh, I went on a little bit more and sort of just start uh, browsing the internet for other people like him. And I came across this one guy on uh, C-SPAN uh, 2, uh, Book TV, and it was uh, Chris Hedges. So I thought I'd sit down and listen to him for a bit. Uh, it was a couple hours worth of uh, 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 lectures and interviews and uh, it, it, it was it was a it, it was a surprise what I found, and I'll let you know all about that in the next segment. All right, take it easy. I kind of figure out why I'm having such a hard time doing these uh, vlogs these last few days, and a lot of it has to do with uh, the amount of time I've been sleeping. So, begin with. I will give you the time and date stamp, because it is a vlog after all. So it is 23 hours and 39 minutes into the day of Friday, January 3rd, 2014. That's right. Uh, <coughs> I got up uh, about 15-20 minutes ago, just to have something to eat and something to drink. So far, I'm still doing a lot of sleeping. Now my body's still really tired, so I'm not back to full speed. And this is why these vlogs are a little difficult to do, because I'm not back to full speed. <coughs> and <coughs> there's not as much to talk about as I thought there would be. So, that being said, I thought, I was thinking about more about the Asian snack haul that I did. Uh, looking at the Oreo cookies and... Uh, the thing called Kratz. <coughs> I went and looked at this online and found out that this is the same company that does Pokey. Should say Pocky, I should say. Not Pokey. Pokey is is, is, is a uh, is a green horse from uh, from an old TV show called Gumby and Pokey. Pocky <laughs> is the can is the uh, pretzel sticks that are basically from the same company as Kratz. Ugh. 
But anyways, uh, I digress. I think I'm going to be bringing more of these snack things in, in into the uh, into the uh, vlogs because that's how I'm going to bring the kitchen diner into and everything. Because one of the goals of the kitchen diner is to to find snacks like this that are unusual. <coughs> And reverse engineer and figure out how to make them out, make them at home as the same quality that you would find in the bag in terms of the taste and flavor and so on and so forth but uh, have a better quality in terms of being homemade uh, not processed and so that's sort of how we bring the kitchen diner into the uh, right start now bringing the kitchen diner into uh, BTS logs and eventually they it will produce its own series and uh, you can look forward to that but in the, in the meantime we'll be doing the test uh, the test shots in here in the BTS logs uh, what was I doing over the week uh, over the last few days since uh, basically some month from Monday to Friday this week uh, <coughs> I continued on with the idea that I was looking at uh, Miles Power uh, and his whole thing on debunking. And I went and looked at a couple of the debunkers and sort of stumbled onto this uh, channel on YouTube that uh, sort of rebroadcasts uh, this sort of book TV. It's a service of C-SPAN 2. And they have a lot of they have a lot of uh, very interesting discussions on there. Very interesting uh, lectures. <coughs> but as per most of these sort of called academic discussion groups, most of them are significantly liberal leaning. They're not necessarily on the right side of the spectrum. I'm not necessarily on the right side of the spectrum, but they are tilted heavily towards the left. Even when you have people who are supposedly defending the right, what you have are not necessarily uh, people on the right, but you have apologists. People who have become, people who are on the left, but become uh, have become uh, sort of disenchanted with the left and are now sort of sort of wandering in a hinterland of not left but not right either. Now, so many suppose that, well, this is a good thing because uh, well, now he's more, they're more center, but not necessarily because uh, <coughs> they're kind of confused about where they are, politically speaking, and what they should be thinking. And this is the case with uh, Chris Hedges. This is sort of what I was looking at him over the last few days. Uh, and I was watching his uh, uh, his interview uh, on afterwards from uh, uh, Book TV on C-SPAN 2. He was being uh, interviewed by, uh, let's see, Ron, Ron Suskin. Uh, and his, both these guys are authors. So it's an author interviewing another author. Uh, both of them have... <coughs> 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 uh, Left-leaning books sort of a, a liberal view of the world for the end of the world and both have the view that the United States uh, is a 200 year mistake. This is something that, that sort of was posed by uh, Michael Moore, the film the filmmaker. Uh, and the thing is is that it's a bizarre contradiction because what ends up happening is that Chris Hedges, even though he ends up supporting the uh, left f for a lot of his things in terms of his ideals. His practicality, his, 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 his experience actually denies the left and stands wholly in contradiction to what the left stands for. And he points this out. He point, and then this is what he points out the conflict between his experience And his belief in the left. And the thing is, what you see here, as you keep watching this, uh, watching this further, and this is sort of this is now popping up in my feed more. This whole thing on uh, Christianity, these discussions on 
on faith and religion and atheism and so on and so forth. Uh, as I say, uh, Christianity is part of the problem why faith is bad. Christopher Hitchens uh, is another guy who popped up. This is a 2007. Uh, <coughs> there was another guy named Sam something or other. I can't remember what his last name was. Uh, I'll have to go back and check my notes better. And they're both talking about both sides are talking about religion. The problem is both sides, and this is what I argued, what I said before, both sides are completely missing the issue because both sides are unaware of close to a thousand years worth of history, of Christian history, that, that really doesn't appear anywhere in the history books. You have to go into specialized archives in order to find it. And so what happens is you have two sides talking at each other, and it really produces uh, quite an interesting quandary because... Uh, you never really get at a full solution as to what's actually happening and where things should be going. You get a lot of eye-opening ideas in terms of what they're talking about, but other than that, I'm going to continue in the next segment. All right, take it easy. Well, it's time to get started again. It's... Uh Let's see, it's uh, 13 hours and 39 minutes into the day of Saturday, January 4th, 2014. And we were supposed to have started our, our, our weekend vlog a couple hours ago. But the way things are working out, uh, I'm only doing partial days. So this vlog is still part of the... Uh, January 1st to January 4th vlog kind of extended it out uh, out of necessity there's really no <laughs> other way to say it that, that uh, a little bit behind uh, I spent most of yesterday uh, working on uh, repairs to the heating system it was not a good day for the heating system to sort of decide to crap out in terms of having some technical problems but it does it did and it does have that problem <coughs> But it's been repaired. It was, uh, and so now the temperature is rising. You know, it's back up where it should be, and that's all right. Anyway, I was talking yesterday. I was I was looking at this, uh, doing some research over the over the week. Uh, sort of uh, heading out from Miles Power, out to see other people like him. Uh, across the internet look, basically take a look at uh, some of the debunkers out there and I came across this uh, YouTube channel it's a uh, book TV uh, c-span 2 I was watching this uh, show called afterwards and this was an old show is from 2009 and it was uh, Ron Suskin uh, interviewing uh, Chris Hedges and I think as I, I, I expected Chris Hedges to be pretty much of a left person, more of a, a liberal. Because most of these uh, intellectual shows, uh, academically oriented shows, are very left-leaning. But as I said before, you need to not simply dismiss uh, that the person is, uh, uh, is a liberal or, or whatever they are. But you need to sort of understand where their arguments come from. And it does bear sitting down and listening to them, even though you may not agree with everything they're saying. As a matter of fact, you may disagree totally with what, what they're saying. Uh, it, but what happens sometimes is that you're looking at... You're trying to look at um, all sides of the particular argument here. And the thing is, is that if you don't do that, there are things that you're going to miss. Things that you will not properly understand. And the end result is going to be that you're going to end up missing out on extremely important information. I'll give an example here. If I simply dismiss Chris Hedges as a liberal, 
and did not sit through the interview, which is kind of long, and limit to other interviews, which were even longer, uh, then some of the information that I was able to pick up from Chris, Chris Hedges, I, I wouldn't have picked up. I would have simply missed it because uh, <coughs> he I w would have simply dismissed his whole idea as simply, well, he's a liberal and that's it. But what you need to consider is you need to consider, and this is where it is important here, his experiences. And what happens is that if you listen to Chris Hedges carefully, what you end up finding out is that he is a liberal who is disaffected with liberal ideas. And what's happened is that most liberals don't have the experience that Chris Hedges does. He is a correspondent. He spent uh, a lot of time in the Middle East. He did, did the war correspondence. So, he, you know, he has... <coughs> experience beyond the standard academics and this experience beyond the academics actually interferes with this it, it, it can it conflicts with it it, it uh, opposes it and he cla classifies himself as an arabist and i'll give you this is one of the examples here Cla classifies himself as an arabist because he spent a lot of time reporting in the middle east and says well not all, all not all muslims are fanatic but he does make a mistake and call calls the middle east the muslim world and where he's coming from, and this is where, you, you know, again, you have to listen carefully to him. You listen to his background, that he is a liberal Christian. He classifies as a liberal Christian, as a, as a Presbyterian background, a background in theology from Harvard. And the thing is, is that when you look at the background, why is he calling the Arab world the Arab world? And that's because he doesn't understand that there was a world that was not Muslim, in the Arab world before the Arabs were there, and what happens, and so what happens while he, he, he ends up saying, and then he's partially correct that not all Muslims feel this way. What he does is he overlooks that the that the Muslims that are there now, in many cases, suffered greatly under the Muslim invasions, because they weren't necessarily Muslims initially to begin with, that these people were converted at the point of the sword. So what he ends up doing is he, he, the, these Arabists. Who aren't uh, who aren't Middle Eastern by origin, and I think it's, I'm going to say this very carefully. An Arab is not necessarily a person who is from the Middle East. <coughs> For example, my family is from the Middle East, but I'm not I'm not an Arab. Why am I not an Arab? Very simple, because I'm a Christian. Arabs are those who are Muslims in, in the Middle East. If you are not a Muslim in the Middle East, you are not an Arab. It's that simple. And in the non-Arab societies, the Christian society, that's the Syrians, the, the Lebanese, the Greeks, because the Greeks were included in this, uh, the non-Arabs. And they weren't, and they were there. They existed prior to Arabs. Arabs came in around between 700 and 800 A.D. The Syrians were there before 700 A.D. Same thing with the Egyptians. Same thing with um, uh, uh, same thing with the um, with the Palestinians. They were there before the before 800 A.D. Same thing with the Greeks. And if you ignore this history, the the, the pre-Muslim history of the Middle East, and only see the Middle East as the Arab world, you end up missing an entire chunk of history. And that result is that you end up becoming an apologist for the Arabs and, and the horrors that occur in the Middle East by saying, well, not all Arabs are like that. And that's, yeah, you're right, they're not all like that, but the thing is you need to acknowledge what the history is. Anyways, in a few minutes I'll come back and we'll continue this thought uh, on Chris Hedges and uh, see you in a few minutes. Alrighty. We're back again, <clears throat> and we're talking about uh, Chris Hedges and about his particular views of the world. And one of the things I found a little troubling about this, not really troubling, but realized that as this term Arabist has come out, and, and I sort of see where a large chunk of the Democrats get this idea, uh, where they support the Middle East, and this whole concept of the Arabist, and these are white people have taken up sympathies for people who are not white. And this is essentially what it is. 
they have fallen in love with the Middle East. They like the culture of the Middle East and have assumed incorrectly that the culture of the Middle East is Arab. And it's not Arab. It's, there is an Egyptian culture. There is a Syrian culture. There is a Jordanian culture. There is a Palestinian culture. <coughs> there is a Greek culture there. There is a uh, a Persian culture there. In other words, there are a number of cultures in the Middle East other than the Arab culture. They are all intermingled and interrelated because of the long history that they have together. They have they, they go back into antiquity. This is the sort of the, 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 the cities, the ancient cities of antiquity. So yes, they're gonna have interrelated cultures. Yes, they're gonna have interrelations between each other. And that's simply due to their long history. And the thing is you can find these interrelations stretching all the way into Asia, into in, in, into in, into Middle Asia and East Asia. And the, the why I say this is that the Middle East <coughs> in terms of the ancient cultures was the western edge of Asia. So as you go into Central, Central and South and Central Asia, that's India. You go east of India, and that's China, that's uh, Vietnam, that's Japan. Uh, so that's East Asia. So you have on the West Asian side, you have you have Iran, you have uh, Syria, you have uh, uh, Iraq, you have uh, Turkey, you have Greece. Uh, that's the western tip of Asia. And you have all these cultures were intermixed. They, they actually traded back and forth with one another. So you do have an intermixing between these cultures. If this is not understood and you see the world as a white person, as a white world, then you see, well, you, you, well, you see the world as Arab, that part of the world, the Middle East is Arab, because you have no knowledge of the world that was there prior to the Arabs. In other words, your thoughts and the way you see things are based on the things you don't see. And this is why I say you have to be careful with uh, simply dismissing other people's ideas because there are things that they see that you don't see. And you need to make sure you go out and see the full thing first before you really start getting into uh, a large chunk of what the person's saying. And they say you also need to dig further. And he... he when he does, and he's, he, he, Chris Hedges is in line with uh, Michael Moore and other liberals who feel the United States is a 200-year mistake, and he talks about uh, the uh, the eruption of this new fascist state that the United States is becoming. He talks about pseudo events, destruction of the working class, uh, real destruction of world class wages, uh, and he also goes into and shows from his experience uh, the, the stuff I'm talking about before. Institutional and academic ignorance, how institutional thought, institutional thinking is not necessarily the truth. It's just simply the common view held by the institution, held by academics. And in many cases, it's enforced as a standard truth. And if you go outside these ideas, these accepted ideas of truth, then you are ridiculed, you are mocked, you are dismissed in the way that you shouldn't be dismissed if you were really, truly, to be open minded, to be really sort of thinking of different things then you do have to sort of think outside the box. You do have to think outside the standard view. And not only change... <coughs> this is where a lot of academics academics and intellectuals get it wrong. It's not about challenging ideas of authority. It's not about challenging somebody else's ideas. It's about challenging your own thoughts and ideas. Understanding and moving further to your own understanding of what you see and what you don't see. But unfortunately, uh, the liberals and many academics simply take the view, attack somebody else's belief, and that shores up your own. And that's not necessarily the case. And what happens is, a lot of the experiences he has, the bad experiences with academics and, and, and the institution, and the institution, sort of his challenges against authority, are a result of this. But the thing is, he doesn't seem to understand that this is a fault of liberalism. So what happens is, although he comes out and says, okay, this is what's happening, he ends up turning around and apologizes for uh, the, uh, these things uh, and says that, that academics is not really like this. These are just bad academics who have hijacked the uh, higher liberal cause of open-mindedness. But that's not the reality. The reality is 
is that academics and, acad and, and subjective thought is very much uh, myopic. It is centered around the human mind and is not open to challenge, but that's why it's subjective. It's only when you go into the objective, when you stand outside your own thoughts, do you begin to see that there is a outside your own thought, that your authority in that thought has diminished because you are now in a more objective place. But most most socialists won't sort of hear that thing because what most people want is they want that authority. They want that academic authority. And unless they're willing to give up the, give up the academic authority, then um, <coughs> they're not going to be objective and they're going to be uh, the, 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 and they're going to be true liberals in, in terms of saying is that they're not going to be that good and the end result is going to be quite disastrous. And this is sort of, you can see, see this, see this, is that, you know, well, well Chris Hedges is, is attacking uh, the whole concept of the uh, corporate utopia that's uh, trying to be put forward. Now, he doesn't understand that the, 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 the a lot of these corporate people are in bed with the unions. That, 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 that These are not only just corporate uh, utopian ideals. These are socialist corporate ut utopian ideals. In other words, even though the corporations are using them, they're socialists at the heart, and there is the governments are the governments are complicit. They are involved in these things, and openly so. So it provides an interesting view, and it was also interesting sort of to, to see this when you watch this uh, watch in conjunction with the watch this whole thing. Uh, the I went back and watched the documentaries on the uh, space race, the uh, man, uh, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, lunar landing. The, that whole history there. Quite interesting in, in conjunction with uh, what Chris Hedges has to say and about what ha and, and the direction the United States has taken. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it for now. I think that's going to be it for uh, this uh, BTS vlog. I have another BTS vlog coming up in a few minutes uh, that will be uh, dealing with uh, January 4th uh, to Monday. What's Monday? Monday is... Uh, Monday is January 6th, so I'll be doing a uh, longer vlog for that too. So anyways, that's it for now. I'll talk to you later. Democratic Earth. Earth.